guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today, I'm coming back at you with a new Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale. And this time, we're going to be doing Jesse's alternate path. Um, this is probably, I think, this probably leads to a much more of a drastic ending. But yeah, guys, uh, let's see exactly what happens here if we choose to be a little reckless. Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of my entertainment. Let's jump right in. Alarm shine, you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Back up just a little bit. Okay. Maybe you can show him you're not a monster. It takes me a moment to understand what Jessie's saying. She's asking me to give up. The pain in her eyes shows how much it weighs on her, too. But we need to do something to wake Owen from this nightmare. Something inside him is keeping him from pulling the trigger. How long will it last? <clears throat> Discreetly, I finger the vial in my pocket. Is this the only way? Do something right. Oh my god. Ah, I hate this so much. Mm -hmm. The glass feels smooth and cold in my paw. I picture squeezing tightly down on it. The pain of stabbing shards letting the potion seep into my system. I imagine my wolfish form fading away. And never experiencing what it is what it is to be like with like this again. To be like Jesse. No. I can't do it. Even it's our best chance to make Owen back down. I can't let him take what's now at the heart of me. It's like Jesse's been saying all along. It's who we are. Our deepest core. If I can't live like this, if neither of us can, then what is life? I'm equal parts feral and tame. I am more than what is this armed man thinks. If this is to be our battle, our face-to-face -face combat, I'm ready to die trying before giving in to his demands. I am a wi- I am wild. The fire blazes inside. I am ready to fight, snare be damned. I've been here before and I've won. And no matter what the consequences, I truly believe I will win again. Like every battle before this one, I press on knowing I would rather take a bullet than live, in, than, live a li than live a life in fear, under someone else's control. I'd rather risk being shot, whatever the result, than lose my gift of freedom forever. I fought for my country, my family, my fellow man. Now I fight for myself. Although when rattles nonsense about knowing Jesse was never his child, I simply close my paw around a small stone on the ground and whisper, Jesse, get ready. She sees what's in my hand, goes pallid up beneath all that fur. She hisses back. Don't you dare! But I've already made my choice. This ends now. In one quick motion, I lean out from behind Jesse and throw the rock at Owen's gun. Owen's eyes go wide. His speech breaks off. He pulls the trigger. Oh, nice. The rock connects. The muzzle flashes. The sound of a bullet whips past my ear. Run! Oh, wow. Jesse... Jesse runs, not away, but toward the danger. Her father's hand works the bolt with the efficiency of a trained soldier. Oh dear. He's fast, but Jesse's faster. Oh god. Damn. What a picture. She snapped that damn thing in two. Holy hell. She got some. Damn, girl, you got some strength. Hmm, choke me. Choke me, wolf mommy. Good lord. Well, I believe that's it for Owen's gun. As, if, as the echo of the snapping wood fades away, all that is left is the sound of Jesse's great hoofs. Owen stands frozen and naked before her, quaking with fear and rage. It's come to this, then. He seems so small now. Jesse looks down on Owen silently, unable or unwilling to speak. What is there to say? Her own flesh and blood. Trust has been broken, a bond beyond repair. More tears well in Jesse's eyes. But she cannot put into words, she lets out in a long, mournful howl. My cheeks are wet as well. I dab them, and to my surprise, my paw comes away red. Ugh. It still rings with the echo of the flying bullet. I lift my hand to find Owen's shot has whipped away my hat and clipped, to the, and clipped off the tip of my ear. Malcolm! Malcolm! Jessie rushes over to me and cradles my head in her paws, blinking away her grief. The wound has begun to sting, but I know it looks worse than it is. I'll be alright, Jesse. Jesse, your father! Her assailant stands beaten, paralyzed, impotent, but still unwilling to back down, stubborn as any other McLeod, unable to understand this display of care between two inhuman creatures. Beasts! Cowards! Despicable things! If you won't do me in, I'll find you in you and see through what you've started! She stands slowly, her eyes aflame, as though I have a death wish. Part of me believes he actually does. You see that creature? The man you call a monster? She points towards me, directing her accusations at Owen. He saved my life. He is selfless. A hero. More caring than you could ever know. You know who the real monster is here, father? 
Stay your forked tongue, changeling. You! You are the monster! You sad, tired old man trying to kill your... She chokes back her anguish as Owen refuses to back down. Your own child! You're frail, eaten alive by your own indignity! None shall ever pity you again, least of all your own kin! Jessie's tongue is every bit as sharp as her fangs, but as she strides towards her father, I see a change in her. Oh my. What an image. <laughs> her face begins to relax and soften. Her voice steadies as she continues speaking to her fallen father. What makes a monster? Is it the thick fur? Oh. The fur in her face and body proceeds to reveal porcelain skin. The devious claws, the threatening fangs. Ooh, she can change back. As she speaks, her claws and fangs begin to slowly recede. Oh, the form she cuts is no less intimidating. Or maybe it's what lurks on the inside, just waiting to be let out. Huh. She stares down the face of evil. Owen gazes back in awe and horror as if witnessing a divine sight. A visage is re-emerging, one he knows, one he cared for once. Is it Jesse? His voice cracks with disbelief. He reaches out at it to see if the image before him is an apparition. Jesse's very real hand slaps him away. Don't you dare say, don't you dare so much as lay a hand on me or Malcolm again! Can't say Owen didn't have that coming. It's all nonsense, isn't it? The tone of Owen's voice has changed from tyrannical to near sublime, as if questioning the mere aspect of, its, of his own existence. All of this, none of this is right, it's unholy! He fumbles in his pocket, pulling out a small, well-worn scrap, a photograph which he looks at as he speaks. The creatures you become, it's my doing, my fault, my loss, my failures, what of them now? Move on, grow a heart for my sister's sake, if there's anything left of that shriveled thing. Leave, go home or crawl back into whatever hole you came from. I know where that hole leads, Owen and I have been to hell and back, only he seems to have never truly found a way out. I must feel pity for his suffering, although I know I can never forgive him. He lives on a bed of his own making now, as do we all. Owen's eyes linger on the photo. He finally sips through his fingers, discarded. He turns his head to the heavens and speaks to the sky. For all I've done and cannot do, Lord, please I beg your forgiveness. I have entered this world with nothing, and all, and all I've gained I've lost. In your name I have given my devotion and life. In return I am given madness and despair. I have nothing. No! No, get. Get back. No, dummy, no. Silly cat. Once he has crested the edge of the hill, Jesse and I collapse into each other's arms. We fall to the ground, sobbing and gripping tight to one another. Through her tears, Jesse gasps for air. I thought I was going to die. I, I can't breathe. It's a feeling I know all too well. I cling to her reassuringly. Take a deep breath. He's gone. We're safe. I rock Jessie in my arms, but I feel her heartbeat racing. I don't believe she's calming down, but I can't say I am either. My dear God, what just happened? Your ear! Malcolm, you're bleeding! I'm alright. We're alive. That's all that matters right now. The bleeding has lessened, though the ringing in my ear continues. The pain is tolerable. The shock is not. I should never have left you in the snare. I'm so sorry. Well, you guys might want to cut him out now. There you go. <laughs> Once again, Jesse urgently attacks the rope around my ankles, apparently undeterred by the urgent that covers it. Her dexterous fingers make short work of the knot. Oh, really now? I rub my sore paws and start to offer Jesse my thanks, only to find her looking worriedly off into the distance. What is it? Malcolm, I, I can't live like this. My heart sinks. I want to believe she's wrong, that there is an immediate solution, but I'm flooded with dejection and heartbreak. I'm so sorry. I could have gotten us both killed. I'm, I'm so deeply sorry. 
Jesse turns back to me, surprised. Oh, Malcolm, no, you saved us both. You took a chance. You had to. We, need to st we needed to stave him off. Tears well in her eyes. If I can't live in peace, I don't want to live. That's the end of it. But look at you, Jesse. Your face, your body. Jesse gives me a look that indicates she's not ready to speak of her transformation. Instead, she offers her hand and helps me to my feet. Malcolm, listen. We can't stay here for long. There may be others after us, and you can't be like this. She places her hands at my hips and holds my gaze. We have to hide. Now let's go. Before leaving the battlefield, I collect my trusty hat and peer through the fresh bullet hole in it. Had it been punched any further down? That's a scenario I'd rather not imagine. Instead, through the hole, a scrap of paper on the ground catches my eye. Before I follow Jesse, I pluck Owen's discarded photograph from the ground. A family portrait taken around the turn of the century. Judging from the age, the man is unmistakably Owen, but he looks different. Is he smiling? Rarely seen him cheerful. The girls must be Marion and Jesse then, as well as their mother, shortly before Grace was born. And, well... This was a time when the McLeod family was still whole. A happier time only Owen remembers, and has chosen to forget. Chosen to forget. Why? Resentment? Denial? I likely never know the answer. Malcolm, hurry! I'm coming! Jesse leads me back to the relative safety of last night's shelter. We ease ourselves under the under the ledge, out of sight, and finally take the time to collect ourselves. This isn't so bad. Cozier than some of the dugouts I've lived in for lived in for sure. Don't say that. We can lay low here until the worst of this passes over, and then. Then what? Go home. Act like nothing happened. No, I I don't know. But I know this. I can't live without you, Malcolm. There's a future for us. One without guns and claws and fangs. One where we are together and safe. I nod in solemn agreement. Jesse, I want to be part of that future. Whatever, wherever it takes us. I smile weakly, but with no less conviction. Realization spreads across Jesse's face as she grasps at my meaning. This isn't where we belong. Neither one of us. Not just because of him, but because we need to be free to live our own lives now. This isn't my home anymore, either. Last night and this morning has proven that. My life has been threatened too many times over. I am sick of it. Sick to the pit of my stomach. We'll start anew. A clean slate. Leave all this drama behind and set the city ablaze with our own brand of excitement. That's not the only thing ablaze. Yes, his mind seems to be alight with possibilities. Whoa, now. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I've had enough excitement for one lifetime. And as I'm still, still awfully conspicuous... The reminder seems to bring Jesse back down to Earth. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. You don't have to be like this. You have the power to transform back. It's already within you, but it's difficult to explain. I, I can help. I always want your help. Honestly, I don't know where to start. I haven't taken the antidote. You shouldn't need it. Just stay very still. Uh, let my energy guide yours. Oh, wow. He is gigantic. We assume the same position as before, as she presses her cold fingers to my hands. I feel a jolt through my forearms, the light burning up to my elbows. The breeze around us grows stronger. Close your eyes. It makes it easier to relax. With my eyes closed, she guides me with her voice. My heart knows the way, too. Self-control is all within me. Deep breaths. Patience. Willingness to change. I drift into my own thoughts, sensing my fur float away, off into the ether. My muzzle shifts and recedes, my ears melting down to human size. My mind controls my body's actions. These contortions, they come easily and fast. The energy around us flows as harmoniously as Jessie's voice. Her speech meanders off into a mantra. You're in control. No one else controls you. He does not control you. Only you have the power over yourself. Take hold of your own power. I'm almost back to human. As I blink my open my eyes, I realize she's no longer talking to me, but to herself. Tears stream down her face. He's not in control. You decide your own fate. You choose. No one else chooses for you. You are safe and powerful. Breathe. Breathe deeper. Breathe again and again. And those clothes are doing a lot of heavy lifting. Jesse. 
Her eyes open and her tears stop. Malcolm, you're back! She smiles, but the sadness is present. The hurt and deceit. All repercussions of her own father. Are you all right? Sadly, I know the answer. I will be, and so will you. We'll have peace soon, very soon. I look down at my body. Blood stained and damaged from the snare. I am human again, whole, and mostly intact. I've been here before, battered and bruised at the end of a battle. I never want to experience it ever again. I don't want to just live in peace, Jesse. I want to live in joy. Jesse's eyes brighten and she finally breaks into a real smile. Malcolm, let's go find our joy. As we emerge from the den in our dirty, torn, bloodied clothes, we must look like a pair of ghouls rising from the grave. Fortunately, we are still breathing, and once again both in human form. It gives us enough confidence to leave our hideaway, but neither of us are so ignorant as to believe that we are fully safe. As we walk, the morning air and soft whistle of the wind all around lulls us into a place of serenity, as if the world is telling us that it is still here for us. It's still spinning with us attached. It humbles me, and strikes me to absorb every moment alive, as I've done now every day since returning home. But Alpha go again, living behind this cluster of waking dreams and nightmares. We stop for a moment for Jessie to readjust the tatters dangling by a thread from her shoulders. I guess we both ought to find some fresh clothes before we hit the road, eh? I'm not getting on a train in these rags. If that's what you mean, I may as well be wearing nothing at all. Her laughter fills the valley. Seemingly oblivious of the, uh, of the immodesty, Jessie had walked proudly by my side the whole way down the glen. The worst is over. We know it in our hearts. I won't mention it again, but I feel like a weight's been lifted from my shoulders. Not wearing my, well, fur coat, it makes me feel safer. Less likely to stir trouble. I'll never stop apologizing for putting us both in danger. The snare, the rock, it was all my fault. I only hope I've not damaged your chance at your dreams. You, Malcolm. I should apologize. I've brought us both into this situation. I hurt you. I, I left you. I left behind. I left you behind. You've not robbed me of my dream, Malcolm. In fact, you've given us the chance to share our dreams together. As a couple. A couple of werewolves. Can you imagine? Everything has happened so fast. We're still having a hard time imagining our future. Werewolves are not. Her enthusiasm is infectious. She looks, so she looks at me with starry eyes. I can't give up on my dream because you won't give up on me. Yes, well... It takes a strong man to hold up to hold up a strong woman. When she laughs and winks at me, I'm struck by all that I love about her. Her independence, her fire and passion, her quick wit and loving heart. What did I do to learn Jessie in my life? My walking, talking, singing, sexy and vivacious stand danger machine. I'm growing more and more excited for all this to be behind us. I'm going to make a life together, grow old together, be a family together. Say, since we're talking about your dreams and our future... At last, I'm able to explain what Walter told me at the pub early this morning, and Jesse listens intently. He really said all that? Likes my performance that much? Aye, an unusual man for sure, but he has a keen eye for talent, I'll give him that. Jesse looks incredulous, but I can tell her appetite is whetted by Walter's offer. I can't believe it! After all this, do you really think that's an option, living with him? He said to meet him at the... He said to meet him at the Strathcarran station this afternoon, if we, if we so choose. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. We've got a little bit more to get through, I believe. So, yeah. Ooh. Got a little bit more content. The next video should probably wrap things up. Alright, so that did differ quite a bit. I'm glad no one actually died or got hurt. Well, Malcolm got hurt, but he'll live. He's okay. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!